What is up YouTube? My name is Eduardo Marino. I'm here to show you guys how I achieve this beautiful panorama using an 85 millimeter lens. You may actually use any other lens that is tighter than a wide angle. So stick around and let me show you how to stitch. Okay, so first is to be at your optimal camera settings. I adjusted my camera with a high shutter speed and a good narrow aperture. This is very important. You want to make sure that all of your images turn out evenly exposed and sharp. Next is to know your frame. Make sure you have an idea of the space that you want to capture because when you're with a telephoto lens all you see is a small selection of your frame that is in front of you. Therefore you want to be thoughtful on understanding this space that you would like to cover in order to fill up your frame. Just an FYI you don't have to move over a specific amount of frame after frame so I suggest that you pen slow and take more pictures. This will make sure that you don't mistakenly miss a chunk of your frame because that will cause your entire image to fall apart. I did this handheld, however I highly recommend doing this with a tripod, but if you don't happen to have it with you, it's okay. Make sure that when you are panning and taking pictures at the same time that you stay as straight as possible. If you don't, let's say you're jumping from left and right and right to left and up and down, Lightroom either won't be able to read and stitch your images, or if it does, your images will give an unpleasant, uneven horizon line. So as you can see, I started by taking my pictures from left to right, then going up a couple of frames and then panning the rest of my series from right to left. Alright if you are happy with your shots and think you have taken enough to fill up your frame now it's time to take it to Lightroom. Once you have uploaded them to Lightroom, what you want to do next is select and highlight all of the images that you have taken. Then you want to right click, photo merge, or if you want to use Photoshop instead, you want to go under edit, drop down to merge to panorama in Photoshop. For the purpose of this video, I will be using Lightroom instead. So back to the merge and then hit panorama. Another window is going to pop up with a list of three options which are spherical is best for 360 panoramas, cylindrical is for those extreme, extreme wides, Perspective, my favorite, is great for any style of photography. It works by slightly morphing and stretching your images in order to achieve straight lines. This option has a very high chance of stitching pretty much anything. However, there will be more or less noticeable morphing in your end results, depending on how well you handled your shots. So keep an eye open when picking this option. Auto crop is pretty self-explanatory. Just remember, any crop that you do now is undistractive, so even when you're done and jump back into Lightroom, you can still readjust your image using its fullest potential size. Lastly, what the boundary wrap does is stretch and shrink your image in order to fill the gaps that you're missing from your frame. Again, very similar to perspective, this option can lead into some additional morphing in your image. So use it if you only have important detail to recover from your foreground. Once you're happy with your options, go ahead and hit merge and wait for Lightroom to build your panorama. Once it's done, now you can edit your image just like any other. I'm going to go ahead and apply one of my own presets. And that is how you build a panorama using a telephoto lens. If you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up as well. Subscribe for future content that aims towards inspiring filmmakers and photographers. I'll be looking forward to releasing more of my own tips and tricks. My name is Eduardo Marino and I will catch you in the next one.